I put very strong clamps on ZTE. They did very bad things to our country. They did very bad things to our economy. But the president of China, President Xi, asked me to look at it. I said I would look at it. But anything we do with ZTE is always — it's just a small component of the overall deal. So what does he mean by that? Joining me right now, National Economic Council Director, Mr. Larry Kudlow. And Larry, it's good to see you. Hello, Trish. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it very much. We go and way back. The viewer may not know this, but uh, Larry and I used to do a show <laughs> together at one point in time. It is good to see you, sir. And I know you've got a lot going on. Well, you're a star, Trish, and I'm proud of you. I, I just before we engage on this, I just want to send my own personal heart and condolence to the victims of this terrible te Texas shooting. I just want to put that out there. I know we're here to talk business, but, you know, God help them. Yeah, no, I, I'm glad you did. I mean, these days are, are tough, tough days, and unfortunately, we've just had far too many of them. Uh, you know, our, our kids should feel safe when they go to school. That should be uh, one of the things that's just sort of a given. But, Larry, thank you um, for addressing that. So back to China. I know you've been involved in some of these meetings in and out there today. Uh, let me ask you, is the president really going to do a deal here with a Chinese telecom company? Well, it's not the telecom company that's the center. The, the telecom company was really an enforcement measure, which I guess has been connected to the uh, trade meeting. may have more to do with the Korean Peninsula, to tell you the truth. I mean, President Trump and President Xi are, you know, working together on a lot of things. L let me be very clear, though. Mm -hmm. it, we're talking about remedies here. We're mm -hmm. not talking about let them off scot-free by any stretch. This came up in our discussions yesterday. Uh, Commerce Secretary Wilbur Ross is having a second look at remedies. Okay. And if there, is a, if there are any structural changes in their uh, case, they will be very harsh. Trust me on this. A huge Specifically fines, for, to ZTE. Change, Change of man, yes, yeah, change of management, change of board, change of everything. So mm -hmm. I want to just—it's there. I don't know. It's up to Mr. Ross, who will make a recommendation to the president. Uh, it's not uh, by any stretch even remotely central to the trade deal. Well, I guess it's just—it's left some people a little bit confused, right? Because on the one hand, you have the president saying, "Look, we we need to fix this situation, this very poor trade situation we have with China." But then on the other hand, you know, President Xi says, hey, will you take a look at this? And he says, sure, OK, I'll take a look at this. While you have the likes of Christopher Wray from the FBI saying, you know, this is kind of dangerous. If ZTE uh, is able to, you know, function here as normal, then our security potentially could be at risk. Well, I think the key point in all this <clears throat> is that the trade talks are going very well. I mean, actually, the uh, president himself has shown more enthusiasm uh, and optimism about this trade deal than I've ever seen him in the whole discussions <laughs> going back many, many weeks. And, um, you know, Vice Premier Liu He gave an excellent presentation to a small group of us in the Oval. He outlined a whole bunch of remedies for the trade deficit issue and the barriers, the tariff and non-tariff barriers, and also, of course, the technology theft problems. Mm, and President one. Trump was very engaged. I mean, I'll just say this. Uh, I'm only down here uh, a couple of months now, but I've worked with him down through the years. He's really much more optimistic than I've ever seen. And I think this is a good thing because it'll open the door for flooding American exports, which would be great for our companies and our workforce and our productivity. And we'll try to move China into the 21st century. Okay. I mean, they're, so does you know, that mean they're unfair trading practices, right. the stuff that nobody uses anymore, they're still using. Larry. So, you know, and the president articulated this well. He used an example that I've actually used on this show, which is that, you know, if you send a car to China, you're going to get slapped at the 25 percent tariff. And we just do a minor fraction of that if the Chinese send a car here. Why don't we have a system where we can send as many cars back and forth as we want and nobody's actually engaging in tariffs, period? Is that on the table? Is that for real? Could we envision a relationship with China where we say to heck with all these tariffs on both sides? Well, I'm with you. I'd like to tear down all the barriers, tariffs and non-tariffs. I think that's good for economic growth. And look, at the moment, I mean, there is no deal. We're just really starting out this process, but we're moving in that direction. I mean, I think that's the best part. And my argument here is, you know, I'm a growth guy. So just think of this for a minute. If the Chinese would knock down their tariffs, their other barriers, their technology issues, and so forth, 
let Americans sell. You know, we are very competitive right now with mm -hmm. tax reform and deregulation and so forth. Mm -hmm. We are capital rich all of a sudden. We will sell tons more goods as exports if they let us. And that's a great way to reduce the trade deficit. It's mm -hmm. a growth solution. And by the by, it'll help China. <laughs> and by the by, it'll help the rest of the world. So this, these talks are very important. I, I don't want to come to conclusions. Deals haven't been met. We're heavy into it on both sides. Mm -hmm. All I want to say is there is a, there's a lot of optimism on the U.S. side that, frankly, I didn't see when we first started this a few weeks right. back. Well, that's good. That's exciting. I like hearing that.